Welcome to Camaraderie, where the best speed money can buy is box speed. Today's episode is sponsored by good old Drip Coffee. Ooh. Ah, it's so smooth. <laughs> Yeah, sorry about the uh, clickbaity thumbnail, but hey, you're the one who clicked on it. Uh, if you're one of the, like, th between three and five hundred people who follow me on Twitter, uh, you might have seen me post this past week about how much I hate color film. And it's true. I, I really don't like color film. Or at least it was uh, up until this week. So, like, 95% of the film that I shoot is black and white. Um, pretty much just out of convenience and cost effectiveness i've talked about this a bunch before on this channel um just being able to buy bulk 100 foot rolls of black and white film really cuts down on the price per shot price per roll um being able to easily develop it in-house by yourself without having to hassle with a lab trying to figure out uh, what lab that you do like you not you you're not having to wait for your film and your negatives and your scans or your prints to come back you know it's just a lot quicker a lot more convenient and cost effective and all of that put together made it really easy for me to get into black and white photography as a way to just learn photography and experiment and just i don't know just have fun Thing is, I did that for so long, I started seeing in black and white. And when I tried out color again, I was just like, man, this doesn't make sense to me anymore. <laughs> so, like, I just kind of put off getting back into color and, like, kind of relearning how to see that way. But I did, and I was like, let me just, I know color is important, and a lot of people use it, and I see in color. So, like, you know... <clears throat> Let me try out some color. And then it came time for me to develop the color film that I shot, and it came out to like between 15 and 25 bucks a roll for developing and scanning from a lab. And then, you know, gods forbid that I wanted to get prints made, and that's an extra 10 to 20 bucks a roll on top of everything else, buying the film, yeah, you know, etc, etc, etc. So I decided to try my hand at developing color at home. Developing color film at home made sense for me. The C41 process would allow me to develop multiple different film stocks at various ISOs in the same chemical bath, which would save me time uh, in the developing process because, you know, it, it's ju it just doesn't work like that with um, black and white film. I also had all the developing tanks and everything and a flatbed scanner for scanning my negatives and one set of c41 chemicals processes um about 25 rolls of color film before needing to be replaced and that set of chemicals for 25 rolls costs about the same amount as getting one roll of film developed scanned and printed from a lab uh, so it seemed like a no-brainer. Seemed like a no-brainer. It turns out that color film is a lot more cantankerous and temperamental than um, black and white film. Without getting too into the weeds of technicality, uh, which I think is a Dungeons and Dragons map, color film is basically just a lot less forgiving. Um, a lot less room for error than with black and white. Like, you need a consistent temperature throughout the entire processing process and there's not a lot of wiggle room um, when it comes to the timing of each step in the process but once you get all that figured out it's just smooth sailing right mm, not quite at least not if you want to actually get your pictures out to a place where people can see them you've still just got some physical negatives and that alone will not bring the sweet endorphin rush of seeing all those little hearts pop up in your notifications so you got to digitize your film negatives, which sounds sacrilegious, and maybe it is, but it's just the way the world works. My flatbed scanner works great for black and white film, but I was uh, less than thrilled with how it handles flipping my color negatives into positive images. It just didn't look like a lab scan, and I felt like a fraud. 
and my portrait tones and vibes just didn't look like Portra, so how was I going to get the attention of Jason from Grainy Days? I was heartbroken. I thought I'd have to settle for overpaying a lab every time I wanted to shoot some color film. But then I was like, hey, you know, I've seen a lot of people talk about um, using Negative Lab Pro, so maybe I should give it a shot. And I did. Negative Lab Pro is a paid plugin for Lightroom that uh, basically mimics the look of different lab scanners. It's not a preset pack, but it kind of mimics one, kind of acts like one, because you can choose um, from the look of different film scanners, um, that, you know, like Frontier or Noritsu or Pacon. Um, yeah, it's got a couple other options in there too, but you can also adjust things like uh, how it reads your white balance, like if you want it a little bit warmer, a little bit cooler. Um, yeah, if you want hard shadows, soft highlights, or vice versa, stuff like that. It's actually quite a capable little plugin, and each scanner has a slightly different look, um, just like I mean, just like the real scanners do, because, um, you know, you can ship your film off to three different labs and get them all scanned in, and each lab is going to bring back a slightly different scan. I got all this figured out, and I still wasn't satisfied. Negative Lab Pro works by setting the white balance of each roll by sampling from either the film border or the bits in between the frames, and then it goes from there. My flatbed actually processes the film border out whenever it scans, so I didn't have like a thing to white balance it with. So my scans were looking weird, so I had to figure something else out. I settled on scanning my negatives with my digital camera. Right. Do you have anything to say? No? Yeah, no, I should probably get on with it. Yeah, I know, you're right. Um, but yeah, no, so I, decided to try out DSLR scanning of my negatives. That way I could capture the whole film bit with the border and everything so I could have the white balance um, set correctly. And uh, <laughs> yeah, then everything was great, except it still wasn't. Because of course, that brings us to earlier this week when I tweeted about hating color film so much. I had just gotten back from a week in Chicago and was super excited to get back and get everything processed and put out a dope video about my time there and share some dope pics, some sweet tones. I couldn't for the life of me figure out what I was doing wrong. And then I like slipped into a bit of an existential crisis, questioning if I was any good at photography or it's like, do I even know how to read my light meter? Was I even worthy to hold a camera? I had watched and read tons of tutorials on Negative Lab Pro. I was following them to a T. Why are my pictures turning out so dark? Why are the colors so dumb looking? Why was I born? Turns out I just needed to crop my pictures before converting. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Because I shot about 450-ish uh, color images while I was in Chicago, and because my DSLR scanning setup isn't ideal, I was doing just like a rough crop so that I could convert them and then go through and like pick out which ones I liked and then like do a final crop. Yeah, none of the tutorials that I read or watched mentioned that um, you should only have film in whatever it is that you're converting. Maybe I missed it. Uh, maybe it's implied or just understood by everyone, but not not by me. I didn't realize that whatever is not actually film that's in the shot just really messes with uh, Negative Lab Pro's algorithm or however it processes the negative. So it makes sense in hindsight, but I just didn't know, man. I just didn't know. And my film negative holder, as as convenient as it is and as useful as it is for keeping film flat and in place, turns out it almost made me swear off color film altogether. I'm just glad I figured it out, honestly. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to share this 
important but overlooked step in the negative lab pro workflow i hope this uh, video has helped you if this is something you've also been trying to figure out my film scanning setup will no doubt change and improve over time as i can afford better more specialized equipment like i would love a longer macro lens um, that way i can get closer to the uh, film negative so that it would be a higher resolution i would like a actual like film holder <laughs> um, rather than just something for my flatbed scanner like something i can like roll the film through frame by frame that way i don't have to do all the cropping and adjusting and everything and it wouldn't take as long in that step but for now i'm just glad that i can actually see the tones as they were meant to be let me know in the comments how you digitize your film um or if you even digitize it maybe you just um have a bunch of negatives and you only make prints that's the only way people can see your work i mean my hat's off to you if um if that's the case otherwise you can uh, subscribe if you would like to see more stuff like this. Next week's episode is going to be an overview of my time in Chicago and at VCF Midwest. Um, it was a fantastic time. Uh, there's a teaser for that that's already on my channel, so go check that out just to get in the mood. But yeah, no, I'll be on this side of the lens in the next video, uh, but until then, see you. Are y'all ready? This is it. I'm actually doing it. Of not. I'm never shaving my mustache. Not all the way. I'll trim it. Oh, I'll trim it real good. All I'm saying, all I'm saying is that Alex Trebek, rest in peace. He had a mustache my entire life while I was growing up, and then he shaved it, and then. However many years later, he has pancreatic cancer. I'm sorry. I'm not shaving this mustache. Um, it's my preventative measure for pancreatic cancer. Bye.